Good morning, everyone. We are opening the week of public hearings of the Inter-American Commission. We are having online hearings. We hope to have on-site hearings soon. This is the first hearing of the 183rd period of sessions. The title of the hearing is Situation of the Human Rights of Indigenous Peoples in the Context of Extractive Activities in Bolivia. It was requested by the Documentation Information Center Bolivia, Sevid, and the National Coordinating Committee for the Defense of Native Indigenous Peace, Peasants, Territories, and Protected Areas. My name is Julissa Mantilla. I'm the President of the Inter-American Commission, and Commissioner Joel Hernandez and Commissioner Roberta Clark are here with me today. The Assistant Executive Secretary for Monitoring, Maria Claudia Pulido, is here with me, and also the Rapporteur, Soledad Muñoz, Muñoz is here as well. Um, I would like to greet the representatives of the state, the civil society, and Marcos Arellana, that is a UN rapporteur for toxic uh, and human rights. I would like to let you know the distribution of time for the methodology of this hearing. First, we will have the civil society for 20 minutes, then the same, the same amount of time will be assigned to the state. Then the UN expert will have seven minutes and then the, 20, the commission will have 20 minutes for their interventions. After that, we will have a second round of comments from civil society and from the state, 10 minutes each. Some important considerations. First, we have a digital tool to measure time. Uh, we also have simultaneous interpretation and closed captioning. If the delegations don't want to use some of the minutes, you can use them at the end. I also would like to let you know that these public hearings are broadcasted and or streamed uh, in streamed and the recorders recordings are available on YouTube in English and Spanish. We will begin by giving the floor to civil society for 20 minutes. Good morning, dear commissioners, Madam President. And we would like to thank you for allowing us to have this here. And I would like to introduce who will be participating. I'm Oscaro Campanini. I'm the director of the Docu Documentation Information Center of Bolivia. Then we will have Ruth Alipas, that is the coordinator of the National Coordinated Committee for the Defense of Native Indigenous Peasant Territories and Protected Areas. And then Jose, Jesus Olivero Berbel from the University of Cartagena, Bol Colombia. Um, over this hearing, we would like to talk about the situation of human rights of indigenous peoples in the context of extractive activities in Bolivia. We would like to talk about the use of or the structure of mercury for gold mining. That is, includes night. Uh, we have the extraction is conducted by 94% of cooperatives. Mercury is a highly toxic substance, especially because of an impact on the health of children and women, and because it stays in the body and also in the environment. The emissions of mercury into the environment have serious consequences on human rights, especially for women, children, and indigenous peoples. In Bolivia in 2019, we have a record of gold mining, 42,000 tons, that it tripled against 2013. During the same period of time, the legal exports of gold increased 20 times. We have 192 tons exported illegally. Also in 2021, over 1,000 tons of mercury were exported in, the, in recent years. And therefore, Bolivia is the second legal exporter of mercury around the world. According to the mining ministry, the mining, uh, according to the mining ministry, Bolivia produces only two tons of mining of mercury every, day, uh, every year, but 50% of mercury is exported illegally from Bolivia to neighboring countries. And this increases the impact of the mercury mining. And this increases also the use of mercury in neighboring countries. 
in 2017, the IACHR warned about the pollution of mercury and unfortunately, the government of Bolivia did not conduct any actions to prevent these violations of human rights as a result of the mining of mercury. Apart from the ratification of the Minamata Agreement in 2015, exports increased to 150,000 tons in 2015. And therefore, we see that the actions are insufficient, even though there is no legal um, framework for this, what we see is that regulations are amended or have been amended several times in order to simplify the processing and the paperwork for the mining industry. And therefore, according to the government of Bolivia, 90% of gold extracted in Bolivia does not follow legal regulations and do not use mercury recovery equipment in spite of the fact that there is a baseline uh, since 2015 in order to identify the levels of mercury in people in Bolivia, we see that there is uh, high levels of mercury in people, but there has been no action to prevent this. The national action plan established by the Miramata agreement has not been established in order to eliminate the use of mercury in spite of the fact that the deadline is one year and a half expired. And also the government should have created this plan over one year and a half ago. Since 2019, the government of Bolivia, the last three administrations rejected a bill to control mercury exports. To summarize, Mercury exports motivated by gold mining are without control. And this has increased the consequences on human rights in Bolivia and in the region. And the government, in spite of the legal instruments that exist, did not comply with its uh, protection work. I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Ruth Alipas. Good morning. My name is Jesus Olivero Berbel. I'm the coordinator of the PhD on environmental toxicology of the University of Cartagena in Colombia. Last year, I had the opportunity of conducting together with CEDIV a series of monitoring actions regarding pollution by mercury in different indigenous communities along the Veli River in Bolivia. This was done towards late October and the beginning of November last year. We could take samples to 350 people. All of them belong to different indigenous communities along the Beni River. The samples were brought to Colombia. We analyzed them in the lab of toxicology of the University of Cartagena. The concentrations of mercury that we found in indigenous communities were around 1 ppm and 27 ppm. And there was an average of 7 ppm. Internationally, the maximum that is accepted is one ppm of mercury in hair samples. In all cases, we could find concentrations of mercury that were above what the equipment can measure. And as I said, we saw some significant samples. Uh, we saw concentrations of 27 ppm together with the hair samples in indigenous communities we conducted general evaluations regarding the health condition of people by interviewing people and we saw 
there was there were cases of loss of memory hand tremors and also sensitive issues especially these affected people with high levels of mercury in their hair samples i must say that um the issues that we are observing in bolivia because of mercury pollution are similar to those of the amazon basin indigenous peoples have only one possibility to consume protein they need to fish and mercury is one of the elements that can increase its concentration when there is an increase of the species within the food chain. So using fish as a protein source by these communities will have consequences on the mercury buildup process among people. Indigenous peoples have no voice to demand a reduction in the use of mercury so that food is not poisoned with mercury. We address this issue. What will happen is that in a short period of time, serious health issues among indigenous peoples in the Amazon region, especially in those areas in our territory where we have indigenous peoples that depend on fishing and that are being subjected to mining activities. We need to conduct epidemiology studies to determine the impact on the health of indigenous communities by the concentration of mercury. We need to take into consideration the health of communities because they are at risk of deterioration. The mercury is a very uh, highly toxic element that affects the central nervous system, but also affects all the systems of the body. I must say, say to conclude that the knowledge that exists today regarding mercury has to do with the effects on the cognitive development of people. We need to understand that indigenous children of Bolivia and the Amazon basin high high levels of mercury in their bodies is something that we need to solve as soon as possible the next person who is going to speak miss ruth thank you good morning madam president commissioners and staff. Ruth, my name is Ruth Alipas, and I'm on repre representative Contionap, Contiocap in Bolivia. And we believe that our country, because of its historical fights, we have advanced on the recognition of our rights of indigenous peoples. The political constitution of Bolivia of 2019 recognizes our right to territory, to self-determination, to economic, social, cultural, democratic, and legal um, identity. This is included in the ILO 169 convention. Also, we have the personality of indigenous peoples either in the legal framework of Bolivia, but the high level of mining activities, deforestation for agribusiness and monocultures in our countries have intensified. 
and there are regulations that support this and that support mining. The law on mining of 2014 has excluded indigenous peoples and it only favors political and economic groups and third parties that do not belong to our territories have the right to ownership by mining leases and agreements. Decrease from 2015 allow for oil exploration in protected areas and allow for mining and oil activities in our territories. And the mining sector says that mining activities in protected areas are prohibited and that they are not conducting them. Decree 2298 of 2015 changes the nature of prior consultation and supports the mining law which indicates that mining concessions before 2014 do not require prior consultation, but the state has the duty to comply with Convention 169 of the ILO. Law 969 of 2017 violates the right to self-determination of indigenous peoples in the indigenous territory. And this being a terrible tool in order to divide our communities and to divide our families, co-opt our leaders and to impose parallel organizations on us. They change prior consultation. So now it's just a formality. So we have people who are not from our communities who consult third parties and they use the name of our communities so that they promote mining activities. And if we do not respond to prior consultations from the state, the state decides over those who will be affected by the activities. And some of the effects of mining in Bolivia include the destruction of rivers as water sources and as a way of obtaining food, especially for those communities who live from fishing. The loss of spiritual spaces, the loss of the river for our sovereignty, loss of rivers as a transport and communication waterway, because then we have big ships that are in our rivers searching for gold, the poisoning of waters with mercury and other metals, and this causes diseases in children for example, in some communities. According to a study of IPE, women have up to three ppm of mercury when the level that is tolerated is one ppm. And right now, they are destroying river twitch in one of our national parks. Mercury mining, whether legal or illegal, pollutes, promotes the prostitution of minors, and also affects the health of indigenous peoples and any other human being. This is against life. And the state of Bolivia has created more rules and regulations to violate our rights instead of protecting them. So that's why we asked the IACHR to conduct the pending in loco visit as soon as possible in order to verify the critical situation that we are living in Bolivia because of the impact of mercury mining. And we would like to request the IACHR to conduct a thematic report regarding mer mercury pollution in Bolivia and to help us protect the lives of indigenous peoples and civil society as a whole. Thank you. I don't know if the civil society ended, concluded. Okay, so you have two additional minutes in case you want to use it at the end. And now we will give the floor to the representatives of the state. Good morning, 
distinguished members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. Joel Hernandez, Commissioner and Rapporteur for the country. Julie Samantilla, Commissioner Marco Orellana, representative of the UN, Solidad Garcia, Rapporteur for Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and Environmental Rights. Maria Claudia, Maria Claudia Pulido, Pulido, Secretary, Executive Secretary of the Commission, the staff of the Commission. I would like to read from on behalf of the government of Bolivia today as a general prosecutor office of the state, Vice Minister Mahim Herrera, Minister of Environment, Biodiversity and Climate Changes and Forest Development, Juan Crayuca, of the Ministry of Mining, who are here present today, we would like to provide information, official information as to the situation of human rights of indigenous peoples within the context of the extractive activities in Bolivia. The topic which is of top priority for our plurinational state. As you may know, Bolivia is a country of indigenous people mainly. That is why the model, the state model adopted from the Constitutional Assembly and the referendum which approves the constitution of the state determines the state as plurinational, recognizing the pre-colonial existence of indigenous people and peasant peoples and their domain on their territories and warranting their Redetermination in agreement to international uh, bodies of law, of human rights. The political conception of the state includes as ethic and moral principles the well being, Nyandereko, which is in, in, the, in indigenous language, Tekokawi, good life, Ibing Mareyi. Earth without difficulties, and Kapaya, new life or new path. And we respect the Mother Earth. And this is evident since we have regulations such as the law number 71 of the Mother Earth and the framework law on Mother Earth and the development to live well and decree 1966 of the Mother Earth, which protects the Mother Earth and every forms of life. The state has consolidated the rights of nations and indigenous peoples. Among them, we would like to underscore the right to live in a safe, and healthy environment with the adequate leveraging of the means and we would like to respect the their cosmovision and traditional practices they have the right also to be consulted through proper proceedings and through their institutions anytime there are legislative or administrative measures which may affect them. And they have a right to participate of the benefits of the exploration of uh, mining, mining resources in their territories, the protection to indigenous people is also uh, protected. We have special laws and the Declaration on Human Rights People. The commissioners may know the campaign which our state has maintained and we would like to support in the framework of the OAS 
in order to achieve the recognition of the Mother Earth and its inclusion in the Paris Agreement and um, the Declaration on the United Nations on the Rights of the Mother Earth. The Bolivian state ratified the regional agreement on access to information, public participation and engagement, and the access to justice in environmental issues in Latin America and the Caribbean. This agreement, the Escazú agreement, shows our willingness and the actions in order to protect the right to a healthy environment. Within that framework, the use of mercury for the population, for the indigenous peoples of our state has been a topic of priority. As you may know, through law 759 of uh, December 2015, the Convention on Minamanta on Mercury was ratified, adopted in 2013, and it complies with the monitoring measures. The state presented the biannual report of the year 2019 and the whole report in 2021. This information is available to the public at large and it is on the site of the Convention of Minamanda. In November 2021, on at the request of special proceedings of the Office of the High Commissioners of the United Nations, the state, the French state, sorry, the state conveyed the communication to the special rapporteur on the consequences on human rights of the management and the elimination of the substances of um, danger, hazardous residues. And I would like to comment on the advances and the challenges existing on the matter. However, the state is aware of the concern raised by Sajib and Contiocap, both the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights and the special rapporteurs. However, as those organizations know the institutions of the state, they are, we are open to the engagement of the different organizations of these uh, or extractive organizations in Bolivia and their impact in the indigenous peoples. Respecting the time allotted by the commission, I would like to summarize the measures required in order to achieve the compliance of the Minamanta Convention, so as to then give the floor to the vice Minister Mahir Herrera, who will develop the specific part on the procedures and the measures in the environmental area. I would like to first say that the Ministry of Health drafted the document of practice for the surveillance of health of populations exposed to mercury. The inventory of mercury of seven hospitals, public and private for hospitals of the city of La Paz, with the uh, um, support of the OPS and the, OM and the OMS, and the uh, creation of environmental health now named as health program, which has the technical area of human toxicology as to the gradual reduction of uh, dental pieces. The ministry resolution in 2019 was issues which prohibits the use of mercury in dental um, cases or coatings and with uh, in order to warranty the health and the safe work of mining workers and their families, the state established that 
cooperatives, mining cooperatives, before starting their activities, have to obtain environmental license for their functioning and their requirement is the approval of safety programs at work. This is through a measure adopted by Ministerial Resolution 14.11.18. The content of this ministry resolution is according to international standards and they have certain devices in terms of protection of hygiene and health and they have to be implemented in the companies and their, e their end is the prevention of occupational hazards. I would like to give the floor now to the vice minister. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you on this occasion. I would like to extend a greetings from Juan Santos Cruz, the ministry, and I am participating on this hearing on his behalf. I would like to greet the president of the commission and all the people present. I would also like to greet the representatives of social organizations such as Oscar Campanini, Jesus Oliveira, Ruth Alipas from Uchipiamona, I am Aymara, he speaks in an indigenous language. And moving on to what Dr. K has uh, underscored in compliance with the Convention of Minamanta, the state has determined that the Minister of uh, Environment and Water through the Forest Development Agency issues technical reports on the con request of consent for the import of mercury to Bolivia. Between 2019 to 2021, there were recommendations of acceptance of consent for the import of mercury for the mining activities, and they did not they were not higher than the um, maximum enabled by OSC, which is 90 tons. Up to date, we are addressing a regulation proposal which we allow the customs to re request the written consent for the import of mercury. There is also a project for the drafting of the National Action Plan in the mining sector in the small scale mining sector for a budget of 500,000 US dollars and its purpose is to uh, improve the national capacity so as to manage mercury for the uh, gold mining activities. The project Give Goals Plus Bolivia is also under development whose objective is the reduction of mercury mining of small scale mining in the uh, plurinational state of Bolivia, which has a budget of six billion uh, dollars, US dollars for five years and its components are the following to formalize the sector of artisan mining, access to the chain of supplies who are responsible for them, the improvement of the approval of technologies without mercury, the exchange of knowledge, notifications and communications and the support of local development of capacities and the monitoring and assessment. Through the National Program of Organic Pollution, which depends upon the Minister, Ministry of Environment and Water, 
we would like to accelerate the compliance of the Minamanta Convention through a control of the commerce of, of the trade of mercury in Latin America. That's the title of the program, which whose purpose is to improve the flow of uh, provision of mercury and to improve the regulations for the regulation of trade and to improve the measures of control in order to reduce uh, illegal imports um, and purchase from other countries. There were also cooperation measures for the com compliance of the Minamanta Convention, namely, the project of the program of bilateral cooperation for for Colombia, which needs to formalize the mining activities, the use of the identification of new technologies in this procedure. The second one is that within the framework of Lima in 2017 and the action plan of Cobija of 2018, with the Republic of Peru as to the exchange of information on the trans from transborder movement of uh, mercury experiences and good practices, among others, within the framework of the Minamanta Convention on Mercury. In 2021, we also conducted the binational technical workshop for the exchange of information on the control of use of mercury within the framework of the Convention of Minamanta. Its purpose is to provide information as to the advances and the progress of the Minamanta Convention and the traceability of mercury and the uh, regulations applied within the mining activities and the problem on mercury and the advances of the health sector. There were also control mechanisms implemented for the identification and control of the use of mercury according to the regulation of prevention and environmental control in two scenarios. One of them is the system of in, uh, environmental impact assessment and the CCA, which is the control of uh, environment. We would like to identify and to apply the instruments for a project which can uh, have a damage on the environment and the population, thus establishing measures in order to reduce the negative impact and to Uh, prevent from the impact of mercury. This project has several environmental impact assessments and the declaration of impact assessments through the procedures and the study of technical system established in the environmental regulation control. This system has as its aim to preserve and restore the environment and the natural resources in order to improve the quality of life of the population and to use natural resources, but to also control and avoid activities that lead to hazardous um, outcomes for the health of the population. Both systems are drafted by consultants hired by the mining stakeholders within the license granting procedure. And these are revised by the mining in ministry and then by the environmental ministry so as to ensure the commitment with the um, environmental commitments established by the local authority. The Ministry of Environment also revises, uh, conducts a technical revision of the adequate management of mercury in the case of export 
and import activities and the concentration of mining uh, minerals. And these reports the advance and the compliance with the measures of uh, environmental prevention and control. If there are uh, contraventions verified, the authority is the one that assumes the actions that are applicable according to the uh, environmental report 110 for mining activities. It is evident that the Bolivian state is assuming through dif different measures that reduce and mitigate the impact of mercury in the health of the population affected through its internal regulations and the implementation of the Minamata Convention, the formulation of an action plan, and uh, health occupational actions. There are also dif different measures addressed to mitigating the uh, consequences on the indigenous people established at the national level by the different departments. Thank you. I would really like to thank you. We have already exceeded the time you had a lot we had allotted for this state but i believe that in the second part of the presentation you will complete these topics that are pending but we have to be really strict with time so as to um so as to comply with the allotted time i don't know if the ambassador is there i believe that he is there Madam President, good morning. Sorry to be here late, but we have the, the time change in the United States. I have this here at 14 a.m. our time, but we are here. I would like to greet the members of the commission and the representatives of the state and civil society. I would like to greet all of you. I would like to make a general comment. This here is 9 a.m. DC. The change of the time uh, was not considered. I would like to get it now, Marco Sarajana, that is a special reporter for Toxics and Human Rights of the United Nations. Thank you, Madam President, honorable, honorable commissioners, and all people, I would like to thank you for allowing me to participate in this hearing. Uh, according to the mandate of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations, reports on dangerous substances and waste throughout all their life cycle. Um, the thematic report in toxic substances talks about or is about human rights and gold mining. I would like to say that gold mining is one of the most high or the highest source of mercury release. These are tons and tons and thousands of tons of mercury released to the environment every year. This creates serious environmental consequences on indigenous and local communities who live according to their traditions and be, are being polluted. I also would like to recall that mercury is a highly dangerous metal. Exposure to mercury creates serious um, issues and can be life-threatening, especially for people in situations of vulnerability, women, children, pregnant women, and indigenous people. This situation affects the life, the right to life, to personal integrity, to health, and to a safe environment. On September 28, 2021, in collaboration with a special rapporteur on, on the rights of indigenous people, Francisco Cali, we sent a letter on human rights violations to the government of Bolivia. And we express our serious concern due to the huge increase of the import and use of mercury in Bolivia and the consequences that this has on the health of people the disproportionate effect of pollution on indigenous territories, their lives and health of indigenous peoples. And we talked about the lack of an effective regulations in Bolivia to control the import, marketing and use 
of mercury in Bolivia, the passing of regulations to promote gold mining at a low scale, a small scale in the country. I also would like to thank the state for replying to us. Their reply includes information on regulatory frameworks, but I would like to highlight that an action plan is missing in Bolivia that includes measures and deadlines to eliminate mercury. I also would like to underscore that it's highly it's a high concern or it's a very important concern that there is illegal traffic of mercury from Bolivia to other countries or neighboring countries, including Peru uh, and other countries. Many Amazon countries are trying to double their efforts to prevent this issue. And these efforts are destroyed because of illegal traffic of mercury. This increase in the use and marketing and traffic of mercury also are against the compliance of the Miramata Convention, whose aim is to protect human health and the environment, especially due to mercury emissions and mercury component emissions. The Miramata Convention is the youngest convention of among the multilateral environmental agreements adopted in 2017, its preamble recognizes that indigenous peoples are especially vulnerable because of their traditions. The Miramata Convention includes uh, several information, mercury products, mercury trading, for example, the fourth section of the conference of the parties that will be conducted next, year, uh, next week in Bali, Indonesia, will include the discussion of a set of measures aimed at reducing the use of mercury in some products. Um, we know that gold mining industry has to adopt measures to reduce and when feasible to eliminate the use of mercury. This is necessary. And in order to eliminate this, we need to have national action plans. And NAPs is the acronym in English. The World Environmental Fund has financed these NAPs around the world, especially if the contracting party determines that small scale mining is not that significant in their territory. They need to notify this to the Secretariat, and they have three years to prepare the NAP. The notification for Bolivia is May the 30th, 2019. They have only two months and a half to present their, their own NAP. So I would like to greet the announcement of the deputy or the vice president of the Ministry of the Environment of Bolivia. Um, I also would like to highlight that the government is delayed, and I would like to highlight how important it is to get indigenous peoples and mining communities involved because they also suffer the impacts of mercury on their lives and their bodies. Annex C of the Miramata Convention includes a long list of elements for these NAPs but does not include the obligation to set deadlines for the elimination of mercury. So Minamata, in spite of being a strong instrument, has some deficiencies and some gaps that should be closed. And countries, in order to uh, comply with their human rights obligations, should go beyond what is established in the Minamata Convention. NAPs are just not sometimes they do not reflect a real strategy or a real policy sometimes they are not an actual plan in order to conclude my intervention i would like to say that i'm really concerned about the increase of the use of mercury in mining activities in bolivia this goes against the efforts of the international community, which are included in the Minamata Convention. And the legal traffic also goes against the efforts of the countries of the Amazon Basin. 
mining based on mercury creates pollution that will affect present and future generations and also will have or will lead to violations of human rights. Therefore, uh, my rapporteurship will continue monitoring the issue of mercury and small scale mining because the impacts are visible and the violations of the rights of indigenous peoples should be prevented and repaired. Thank you for allowing me to participate and to contribute to the great efforts made by the IACHR. Thank you, Rapporteur. As we always said, the work that we conduct in the American system goes hand in hand with the work of the United Nations. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give a start the participation of the Inter-American Commission. First, I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Joel Hernandez, country rapporteur. Thank you, Madam President. Good morning to all. First, I would like to greet the organizations who requested this hearing because they brought to the table a fundamental issue to make what's necessary or to indicate what's necessary to guarantee the rights of the people of Bolivia. I would like to highlight something within this context. That is the importance that the state, that the state of Bolivia is a state party to three fundamental agreements in the matter. The Convention 169 of the ILO, the Miramata Convention, and as I heard, Bolivia is also a state party to the Escazú Agreement. And therefore there is a robust, or there are several robust sources of international law to address this issue in Bolivia. I also would like to highlight how important this hearing is. For the WHO, mercury is one of the 10 most dangerous substances that exist in the world. And that's how the Miramata Convention is so important. In the last nine, nine years, the imports of mercury have um, grown four times for conducting mining activities in the country. And that's why it's so important that there is something that is globally accepted, that is sustainable development. We are here not to prevent mining. What we are here and what we are discussing here is to find ways so that mining activities are conducted following sustainable development uh, rules. And that's why I would like to know in more detail the actions conducted by the state of Bolivia in this matter. I would like to know the measures that they are taking to present on time their NAP. As the special rapporteur Marco Sarashana mentioned, that is one of the obligations of the Miramata Convention. Civil society organizations also mention how relevant this plan is. And I also would like to know about the funding opportunities that exist. I would like to know the time framework for Bolivia to present this their NAP. I also would like to know the reasons that explain this increase in the import of mercury. And if this increase of imports of mercury is being controlled so that sustainable mining activities are conducted. As the special rapporteur mentioned, uh, we have a discussion imports and exports. And also we would like to know if in Bolivia there are customs controls to regulate the imports and the exports that are illegal. I have a question for civil society organizations. You explain the effects of mercury on indigenous peoples in the Amazon. And I would like to know if they have detected 
a pattern of people uh, that have been affected by mercury and if that information is available to the state. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Rapporteur. Now I would like to give the floor to Commissioner Roberta Clark for so she can ask her questions or make comments. Thank you very much, uh, President of the Commission, and uh, good morning to the representatives of the state of Bolivia and to the civil society organizations that have requested this hearing. Um, I want to say I very much appreciate this ongoing dialogue here and also the pre presentation of information from both uh, the state and the civil society organizations. Um, I want to just add, along with uh, Commissioner Hernandez, apart from the three uh, conventions to which he referred, to which Bolivia is uh, a signatory. Bolivia is also the signatory, as I understand it, the additional protocol, the protocol of San Salvador, which uh, has Article 11 on the right to a healthy environment. And uh, of course, the, the content of that right has been interpreted by both the commission and the court. Um, and we do have the special rapporteur on, on line with us, economic, social, environmental rights, and she has also done a superb report that explains the meaning of the right to healthy environment. So it seems that a number of things are not in dispute. One, that there's use of mercury in the gold mining industry and it particularly by small, uh, small scale miners, that the use of mercury exceeds what, uh, are, what are the legal limits set out. I think I heard 90 tons per year um, from the representative of the state. Also, uh, it seems to be not disputed that there is mercury poisoning in indigenous communities um, at, at a fairly high level. Um, it seems not to be in dispute that uh, indigenous communities ought to be involved, uh, in mean, meaningfully involved as consultants in the granting of licenses and also in the monitoring of the mining industry and that too that they should benefit uh, from the mining industry. So several things seem not to be in dispute between the parties. But there are some areas uh, that I think I would like to ask some questions in relation to the, of the state as well as civil society. Understanding how dangerous mercury is, um, I guess my question is what is being done now? We, we've heard quite a lot from the state party on, on its plans, um, on even legal frameworks that have put it, been put into place, but we've not really heard that much about how those legal frameworks have been implemented. And also what is being done now to support the communities who are experiencing mercury poisoning. So what are the active mitigation and repair efforts? I would like to hear uh, from, the, from, the, from the state party. I would also like to uh, hear a little bit more about access to healthcare in indigenous communities that are affected by this high, very high toxicity um, that has been reported to us by the civil society organizations here. And then also, what accounts for, because we, we did hear the legal regulation around the quantity of mercury imported into, into Bolivia, what, do, what does the state know about the illegal importation uh, and how is the justice system involved in preventing this illegal importation? What is the state of knowledge and monitoring? And, and then uh, also, how are what is the state's um, understanding and expectation of civil society organizations to be monitoring how gold mining licenses are being used, what is happening to the mercury, how is, how is, how is it being disposed of, how is uh, uh, indigenous communities involved in the whole chain, um, the special rapporteur from the UN spoke about the, the marketing, the use, the disposal, how indigenous communities involved in that whole chain of monitoring um, this activity. Um, and then I wanted to ask uh, the civil society organizations, because not much was said about children, but I did have a look at a, a commission report from 2007 then on Bolivia, where it was referenced back in 2007, the use of child labor. They didn't specify the mining industry, but I would like to know if that is a live issue still um, in, in Bolivia today. Thank you very much, uh, President. Muchas gracias, eh, comisionada. Eh, como relatora de la mujer, Thank you, Commissioner. As women rapporteur, I also have some questions to make. These questions are both for civil society and for the representatives of the state. I would like to know the level of participation of women in these policies. I'm talking about direct involvement, not through the representatives that they are assigned. I would like to know if they have direct 
participation in those policies. And I'm talking also about prior consultation processes. I would like to know if women have direct involvement. Ms. Ruth talked about prostitution, child labor, which was mentioned by Commissioner Clark. And I would like to know if civil society organizations and the state have detailed information about this. And I would like if the state could explain the policies that are being created in this regard. I'm not talking about sanctioning, but also about the recovery or uh, the protection of the children who are subjected to these crimes. As Commissioner Clark was saying, there are many things uh, in which there is no dispute. One of them is the effects on mercury which are reported. And I would like to ask you about reparation policies. I would like to know what happened with those people who were affected. For example, adults and children that have a mental and physical issue. I would like to know the reparation policies that exist. And with regard to the Miramata Convention, it regulates the specific situation of populations in a specific situation of vulnerability, including women, children, and pregnant women. And this is a question for civil society and for the state. I would like to know if there are statistics regarding miscarriages produced by mercury pollution. And I would like to know the, what, is, what the reproductive health policy is, not at a general level, but specific for this population that is subjected to mercury pollution and the number of miscarriages derived from this situation. I would like to give the floor to the executive, uh, the assistant executive um, secretary, Maria Claudia Pulido. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, the representatives of the state and to our colleague and friend uh, Marco Orellana, I would just like to highlight two pieces of information. First, the Inter-American Commission has been conducting great efforts of participation of indigenous people through a network made up by the Panasonic um, University and there they accounted for the effects of contaminations and on the river and waterways and especially as to mining, illegal and legal mining and use of mercury as pollutant agent. And they also mentioned Bolivia's case and it spoke about the importance of having a national action plan which allowed them to adopt control and monitoring measures. So this report on the rapporteurship of indigenous people has been promoted by the rapporteurship and it, we would like to have conversations uh, on the recommendations issued by the commission on this report, but also greeting uh, the effort that are being conducted by national agreements that are being uh, entering into. And we believe that this uh, report can contribute to those agreements. And secondly, Madam President, from the rapporteurship of indigenous peoples, I would like to be clear on to which are the measures adopted but they also have to be culturally adapted. They have to be in indigenous language. They have to be accessible to everybody so as to they so that they can exert their right to consultation and decision making with informed consent. Those are my two concerns. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Secretary, Madam Rapporteur. Thank you. Madam President, good morning, everybody, commission, colleagues, and the parties present here. Taking part of the 
hearing. I would like to greet the civil society, the state of Bolivia, and the ambassador um, um, before the OAE, the UN. It's important to participate on the stage, which is really important for the Bolivian uh, parties. As Commissioner Roberta Clark was saying, we also have this right recognized in the San Salvador Protocol and in the Article 26 of the uh, Agreement of San Jose de Costa Rica and the uh, different litigation in which this uh, right was assessed. But this also has an impact on different human rights that end up affecting the life of many people, Bolivian people, and from other people of the uh, countries, because this is a regional problem. The right to a healthy environment, the right to health, the right to life, as I say, the right to live well in the indigenous communities and, and I would like to uh, add a question to those posed by the commission and by the uh, ambassador and to add a few considerations. This is a topic that has to be looked from a perspective of the Minamata Convention, obviously. And I would also like to um, want to know about the measures taken until now and so that this national action plan is taken is executed that this also have to do with the companies and human rights and in this case i would like to hear from the state whether there are pro there is progress on this topic that is related to the topics exposed here in this uh, hearing. I would also like to know that if this level of uh, those uh, PPM, uh, which is a diagnosis by the state, apart from these very important academic activities that you have exposed, whether there is a diagnosis of how many people are being affected nowadays and which is a level of uh, damage, because this is important, as Madam President mentioned, to have reparation policies and to uh, know which is the affected population and how they are affected. And I would also like to underscore that, that from the Commission and Redesca, we uh, launched a resolution for the protection of the environment facing climate emergency, resolution 3 slash 2021, which was launched a week ago. And this resolution is also key for the topic at hand since the climate change also increases human exposition to mercury. And I would like to know if there are actions taken or if there is a parameter uh, in the nationally determined contributions as uh, since Bolivia is a uh, party to the Paris Agreement. Uh, I, I am at the disposal of the state and the civil society for a possible report or an in loco visit, whatever the commission decides on. I would like to start the second round of participations with the civil society for 10 minutes. Thank you. We hope to be able to recover the two minutes that were pending in the first round. I would like to highlight two key ideas that were um, mentioned first the consensus on this topic which is really concerning due to the impacts on human rights and due to the urgency of this matter and secondly the topic of mining is a very worrying topic unfortunately in bolivia gold mining is a very relevant activity, but it doesn't have the proper controls. And 
also information i believe that was of uh, importance uh, we need information we need to get to know more about these activities and i would like to mention some things on this topic it's really important to have access to information. However, unfortunately, there were efforts made by the state, for instance, a baseline uh, conducted in 2014 and an inventory which were performed in 2017, but this information is really um, reduced. We should deepen on them. One of these reports is drafted by the report in 2015, all show that we need to carry out actions on the data generated by this report. Unfortunately, we see that there are no measures taken on the recommendations of these reports, which are really um, on the onset of, uh, the, for instance, the knowledge and the impact on the health of indigenous people um based on the use of mercury have not created specific actions to address it there is also uh something important to say as to regulation there are reg there are standards which are really important in bolivia however these regulations are not executed are not enforced the law on indigenous people of high vulnerability is not implemented, it's not enforced due to the lack of uh, regulation and the procedures associated to it. We presented a case to the commission and this was one of the problems. The resolution on the dental codings is a very important advance in order to eliminate the embargoes. We cannot see how is it that they're moving forward. Unfortunately, we, know, we do not see the same determination in the mining sector. I have already mentioned this, but I believe this is important to ratify. There are standards that are in force since 2016, and they are not enforced adequately. These, uh, there is an important provision, which is that mining can use uh, mercury only if the state recovers it and 90 percent of the gold extracted from bolivia is um generated without this me uh, recovery mechanism so these devices are not being applied and finally the last one on the insufficiency of the actions you are saying that this is a very urgent matter and that the what we would like to convey from the civil society we need definite and determined actions and i believe that the actions carried out by the state are insufficient there are uh, consents of imports and exports that are being implemented by the state it's 491 tons that have been imported if we assume that the state estimation on the need of mercury is of 180 tons, there and there is an excess of 200 tons in spite of these consents, and these were imported legally. This is the state which allows these import. This shows that uh, actions taken by the states are inadequate. And we also see great ins insufficiency. This project, the G WF project, uh, has had to be complied with at the end of uh, the previous year. We should already have the national action plan, but it has not been um launched yet so the government has been administering these funds which are around five hundred thousand dollars but we believe it's not enough because the state has financed seven hundred thousand extra us dollars for a building for uh of for cooperative mining cooperatives so 
there is not enough regulations and not enough efforts in order to reduce mercury and bilateral coordinations are actions that are carried out since are being carried out since 2017 however unfortunately they do not have a relevant impact it is uh, known to everybody the problem of illegal imports in bolivia it's a concern of the authorities and their data of these uh, illegal imports. I would like to give the floor to Jesus Olivero. Thank you, Oscar. I would like to make some comments. First, we have a list of those people that require a clinical intervention, an urgent clinical surgery that is due to the high levels of mercury. This is available to the state and i would also like to say and express my concern in saying that initiating the reparation project is not worth it if we do not invest in prevention we cannot keep on importing mercury and using it without any kind of control the indigenous communities are not the only damaged peoples. The fishing that is available for the public as well. So the fish they get is available for the, for the public at large. So it's not a mere problem of the indigenous community, it's for the whole population. We need to determine which are the real effects on health of mercury. Mercury is not the only problem that these communities face. It's just the tip of the iceberg. And this has to be clear because whenever you, whenever somebody does mining, the whole periodic table is exposed to people. And we detected a wide range of, a wide array of elements, chemical elements, and there is no enough information in literature as to the effects of those elements on people. And we need a commitment on the state, not only to engage and to participate on these conventions and regulations, but we need a true commitment in terms of control of input, the adequate use of mercury and all those opportunities in which you do not have other option but to use it to see how this metal can be recovered. I would also like to mention this, uh, the precarious situation, living situation of these indigenous communities. Most of them had access to education, but they lived in inadequate conditions and the uh, education process is probably not working well. This is a call of attention, a very respectful uh, red flag for the government of Bolivia so that they can pay attention to the education received by the indigenous communities, particularly the one we visited. Thank you. As to the question posed, but before that, I would like to mention some things that are really worrying, and it's a fact that the state is not talking about the impacts on indigenous peoples. They are presenting the actions taken, but we are speaking about direct impact to indigenous peoples. And in this context, we are not speaking of what is going to be done with the parties affected and those who are within our indigenous communities. And we also spoke about the benefits generated by the mining for our communities. But from my experience in the territories, it's not benefits because what they're causing is they're making us more poor, poorer and they're taking away from us the means of life. We are losing spaces of life where we could inhabit 
freely and there are royalties between one and 2.5 percent of that mining mining pays and they use us as the facade for great transnationals because there are colombian chinese and brazilian companies so we are not only speaking about small scale mining or handcraft mining we are speaking about the fact that the indigenous peoples are used and they come with great promises of wealth and now i am answering to those questions posed by you that the state the instances such as are enough are the first to grant concessions so we are speaking about concessions but when this plan is drafted what is it going to happen how long does it going is it going to take take are we going to keep on destroying indigenous territories what is it that you're going to do during that period until those controls are implemented? The AHAM, it's an agency that grants mining concessions to our territory all the time. So it's the state itself who is fostering all these effects in our territories, all these consequences. Now, as to the participation of women, the miners do not know on the impact of their on their health on the use of mercury and what is even worse since this is a very uh, male activities there are also authorities that women authorities that promoted the mining activities in our territories and in this case women do not have information at our disposal and even less in our languages. So me, part, the, the engagement is little because there is no information as to the effects on, of mercury on health whatsoever. And this activity also leads to many other illegal activities such as the uh, human trafficking and these or, studies are being carried out by other organ civil society organizations. I participated uh, contributing with information on how these effects on women and children are being. Uh, so that is why we insist on you visiting Bolivia. Thank you, Ruth. I will give the floor to the representatives of the state. Thank you. Taking into consideration that the actions to be carried out are in the mid and long term, after recovering the democracy in our country in 2020, we have resumed actions that were pending during the de facto process and taking into consideration international obligations assumed by the state of Bolivia and taking into consideration the progressiveness of their rights enshrined in the protocol of San Salvador. We are adopting public policy mechanisms to reduce and mitigate the impact of mercury on the health of population affected in general terms. Now, I would like to give the floor to my colleagues so that they answer the questions. First to engineer Fausto Bailes, director of environment of the Ministry of Mining and to Dr. Mahin Herrera Lopez, Vice Minister of Environment, Diversity, Climate Change, and Management and Forestry Development. Good morning to all the participants of this event. On behalf of the President of the Plurinational State of Bolivia, and on behalf of the Minister of Mining, Leandro Villavicencio, and on behalf of all the ministers that include this office or all the members of this staff of Ministry of Mining and Metallurgy. Uh, the use of mercury in the mining industry is a concern and also it is a concern in other industries especially we are talking about health, oil, and mining industries. 
for many years, several internal events at the level of the state were conducted. And one of the main issues is the technological replacement or the mercury replacement. We know that it's very difficult to replace mercury, especially in the mining activities. And our sector has to present actions together with the Ministry of the Environment in order to foresee or to plan a regulated importation of this element, mercury. Also, the Ministry of Mining and Metallurgy conducted the following actions in relation to the Minamata Convention. We provided information and we issued criteria for carrying out the study Mercury Bolivia baseline of uses and pollution, which was published in 2014 by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Environment and Water. We provided information for developing the national inventory of sources of emissions of mercury of Bolivia, which was published in 2017 by the Ministry of Environment. During the administration of 2019, a baseline study was conducted regarding the use of mercury in a scale on small scale mining activities within the framework of B BGI Bolivia. There are several reports in this regard. And we, right now, we are training miners and uh, cooperatives in this matter as ad hoc Andean committee of illegal mining we participated in the issuance of a resolution in May 2019 which established the Andean observatory in order to manage official information about mercury and this is a space to exchange information regarding mercury and the regulations which were approved in resolution 29 and we can include several actions and i would like to mention some of the current administration we participated in several workshops regarding the use of mercury and clean energy technologies. And this was an activity conducted by the Ministry of Energy of Colombia, together with the Swiss cooperation support in the GE Bolivia. And the Ministry of Mining and Metallurgy is also participating in the review of environmental documents regarding the license granting procedures. And we are doing this together with the Ministry of Environment and Waters. And we are working to eliminate the practices included in um, items 1B and 1C of the Miramata Convention. And also we are following the environmental regulations that, the, that we have regarding the mercury use. We know that it's a huge concern and that it is a lot to do. Uh, over this year of our administration, we want to change things. The Ministry of Mining and Metallurgy through its technicians, we have a lot of experts and our actions will lead to good results. 
uh, the government of Bolivia through the Ministry of Environment and Waters is designing the NAP. And this document will be presenting uh, before the group of the um, Minamata Convention. We have a deadline and we know that the process ahead may last around two years and we hope to be implementing the NAP by 2023. This plan includes uh, the direct participation of women. In the Constitution of Bolivia, parity and equity are important and therefore women and youth should be involved. We are including their participation in this new project. So that's why we are conducting the timely consultations with the different communities. I have here the regulations of the Supreme Decree 35 of May 2018, which establishes that inspections or environmental assessments should be conducted with the involvement of indigenous, indigenous communities. And the Ministry of the Environment has participated in the granting and the rejection of some environmental licenses. But it's important to mention that illegal activities regarding mercury, we need to say that most of the activity is illegal. And what we need to do is control. But we don't have a statistics because it's illegal. But there are several sectors that are involved. These include some indigenous communities or border communities uh, and illegal mining is illegal and therefore harms the environment. And Bolivia has created several regulations and projects and consultation or prior consultation is rejected by community leaders because they are involved in those illegal activities. So we need to have a detailed study, not only regarding the effects of mining activities, but we need to take into consideration the other components of the legal activities. That's something that we would like to highlight. And in addition, we would like to say that in 2019 and 2020, several activities were promoted. And we see that many projects where are many other projects or public projects for example the creation of schools were suspended or cancelled especially in 2020 thank you to the representatives of the state we are reaching the end of this hearing i would like to mention some aspects the American Commission appreciates this dialogue. We would like to thank civil society organizations for being here and for your constant work. I also would like to thank the representatives of the state. The commission really appreciates you being here. Not all the states are here participating and we appreciate you being here. I would like to recall that in 2019, the Inter-American Commission posted the report on indigenous and tribal peoples of the Pan-Amazon region. We conducted, a, uh, it includes a situation of human rights and it has a women and a gender approach and an interdisciplinary approach. And this report is a very important element, especially in terms of technical cooperation with the states. I also would like to thank Marcos Orellana, UN rapporteur, as I said before, our work should be supplemented with this focus on human rights, equality, and non-discrimination. I would like to greet my colleagues from the Inter-American Commission, and I would like to greet and thank all those from the team who are supporting us. This is the first hearing of the period of sessions. We are opening this new period of sessions. Thank you, rapporteur and other colleagues, and we will continue promoting this respectful exchange of ideas with a focus on victims and human rights. Have a nice day. See you soon.